good morning my friends. You know if we're driving along this road that I've been coerced to go here by my buddy, so he wins. Let's do it. Let's go to the park. Well, good morning, my friends. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope you guys enjoyed our last couple of days in Bakersfield. Yep, we're back in Hollywood, and we're gonna do some vlogging today. And of course, this one was one of those that, even though I have a long list, probably five, six pages now of things I wanna vlog, something always pops into my day that I see, and I go, hey, I wonder where this was done. Next thing you know, that's the vlog I'm obsessed with doing the next day. So today's no exception. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Yep, yesterday I was rearranging things in my apartment, AKA a pile of stuff fell over and I had to pick it up. And uh, as I was picking up one of the objects, I was reading it and I go, hey, I wonder where this was recorded. I wonder where this was. And next thing you know, I was like, oh man, we're doing that tomorrow. So today, we're actually gonna see something that started in New York and within two years was moved to Los Angeles. Something headed up by Cecil B. DeMille and it was on CBS radio. Today, we're gonna see where they used to record the old Lux Radio Hour. So a little update on my car, since a few people asked, was Breck and I uh, unhooked the battery and everything before we took off for Bakersfield because I saw online they said you're supposed to in order to reset the computer you're supposed to basically like unhook it for like 30 minutes for it to officially completely reset itself but we were like well this will probably be like six hours so we might as well just do it like this so we unhooked it took off came back hooked it back up and then yesterday I drove it was driving better and it had more power but the problem was, every time I'd come to a stop, the idling would be really low and like be making like this weird gurgling sound. But then when I would give it gas, it would be fine. It would take off right away. So I went home, parked it, and then when I started driving today, seems fine. The idling is perfect, has some juice, so I don't know. I tried, you know, since we drive up hills to get here, I figured that would be a pretty good test. It seemed okay, so I guess the, uh, the only really good way to really find out is uh, if that check engine light pops back on or if I take it somewhere where I do like a freeway transition and you're going uphill and accelerating, that's when I can usually feel it the most. So I'm hoping this fixed it and uh, because next week I'm supposed to, is it next week? A week and a half, whatever. April 24th, 25th, I'm heading out of town for a few days. Then I'm gonna come back for a few days. And then since Jaw's birthday is April 28th, I'm thinking of taking him on a trip around that time, a couple of days out of here. You know, it's cool if you kinda take your time, search, you can find places that are really dog friendly. And on Airbnb, we were able to find um, a handful of options for like between 50 and 60 bucks a night, so. Might turn this into a little Days with Jordan the Lion road trip adventure starring the Joster. So I have to run a few errands today, but on the way we're gonna actually do the vlog. And like I said, what, what inspired this was I was moving some things around and I, um, I have a few, even though I don't even have a cassette player anymore, I kept a few of my audio cassettes from when I used to work for Jerry's Famous Deli. Their um, delivery trucks had a cassette player so I would you know, make my own mixtapes and then I would buy audio cassettes. And one of them that I have is Clark Gable doing, it happened one night and also, um, what is it, The Buccaneer? Or no, it's Mutiny on the Bounty and The Buccaneer. I'll have to recheck, I forget, it's one of those two. At one time I had them all, I had both of those, so. Um, but anyway, as I'm looking at it, I read that it says Lux Radio, CBS, and I'm like, wait a minute. I feel like I've walked past a sign recently that said Lux Radio was here. So that's what inspired our vlog today. Nobody cares? None of you want the ball? Now you know what's funny is that when we came back from Bakersfield we were actually picking up Jaw and uh, we were over there and Pollyanna's mom said Oh, so did you did you vlog that post office? And I go, 
what did, post office, what are you talking about? She said, oh, what's that guy's name? Uh, and I go, and I went and vlogged uh, Buck Owens recording studio. She goes, yeah, I think he got a post office. And then I go, really? And she goes, no, 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 it was the other guy. And I go, Merle Haggard? She goes, yeah, they dedicated a post office in Bakersfield today to Merle Haggard. And I go, well, I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. What you know? What are the odds? That would have been hilarious if I would have driven right past it and they would have been doing the ceremony. But yeah, I guess I could have been vlogging that as well and didn't know. We got out there in the water bowl. Didn't have any water in it, so let's take care of that. Oh, he found a friend. Trying to get chased? Nobody wants to chase you? Nobody? Well, I'll get your water. You you work on that. I know, I'm filling up the water right now. It's only so fast I can go. It's surprisingly calm out here today. Last couple of weeks we've come out here and no matter what day we come, it's packed. Look at that lightning bolt racing towards me. He was over there playing with his friends and I was at the opposite side of the park and the next thing I know, he goes walking into the kids park over here that distinctly has a sign that says no dogs so I pulled out my keys and I started rattling him and saying his name and he turned around and ran back to me smart little monkey all right we're out of here well dang it the check engine light just popped on so it looks like there is something else that I have to swap out on this or something well here it is guys this was the inspiration for our vlog today some people always ask how I come up with inspirations or how I come up with vlog ideas right here. I saw that right there and I said, I wonder what the story of Lux Radio is. So today we're gonna go see the Lux Radio Theater. Started in Los Angeles in 1936, but the original concept started in New York on Broadway, 1934, and I'll tell you that story as we walk. Now in the 1930s, it was pretty commonplace for a company that had a product to sponsor a radio show, and that's how the Lux Radio Theater began. The Unilever Company, promoting Lux Soap, decided to sponsor this, and it all began in New York in 1934. Now, originally the concept was that there would be a fictitious producer who would be the announcer for this show. He would announce the show, and there would be a live band, and they would actually do a one-hour adaptation of a popular Broadway play of the time. In as many cases as possible, they would actually get the actors from that play to be in the live broadcast. So if you can imagine, you'd have a live audience, you'd have a live band in this theater, and then you'd have the two lead performers, usually male, female, and they would be right there at microphones on the stage. So in 1936, they decided to move from New York out here to Los Angeles. CBS decided to bring it to Los Angeles, Hollywood in fact, and they set up over here at the Vine Street Theater. Now with this move to Hollywood came a new fictitious host, and within a very short time, not even a full season, they decided to abandon the current model of doing Broadway plays to switching over to do one hour adaptations of film features. So then with the format change, they decided to change the host again. This time to world-renowned famed director Cecil B. DeMille. And Cecil B. DeMille would direct the Lux Radio Theater for the next 10 years. Now today, this is the Monobon Theater, named after Ricardo Monobon. And before that, about 10 years ago, it was the James Doolittle Theater. And then before that, it was something else. And way before that, it was the Vine Street Theater. And in 1936, this is where Cecil B. DeMille debuted his new version of the Lux Radio Theater. He would debut it with a adaptation of Morocco, the film Morocco, and it would be called The Legionnaire and the Lady, starring Clark Gable and Marlena Dietrich. Now Lux Radio would reportedly pay all the actors that would be in these adaptations, $5,000 per appearance, 
So if you can imagine, it was $10,000 invested to promote their product just in the actors alone. Now they would go on to do Casablanca, the Maltese Falcon, it happened one night. I mean, they did just about every big movie of that day and just about every actor from Joan Blondell to Leslie Howard to Clark Gable to Lucille Ball would be in these productions. Now, like I said, Cecil B. DeMille would actually go on to produce these radio broadcasts for the next 10 years, and then a new host would take over, and then in the actual, actually in the early 50s, it would become a television show, and it would last until 1956. So, from 1936 till 1956, the run of the Lux Radio Theater was one of the mainstays in entertainment for America. And you can go on YouTube and you can find countless um, versions of those broadcasts on there. All of them were one hour long adaptations. Now, the first film that they did, like I said, was Morocco, and they did it as um, The Legionnaire and the Lady with Clark Gable and Marlene Dietrich. But the second broadcast they had was an adaptation of The Thin Man, starring William Powell and Myrna Loy. Oh, perfect, thank you. Wow, that's so awesome. Just imagine Cecil B. DeMille was directing those broadcasts for 10 years here. Clark Gable, Marlena Dietrich, William Powell, Myrna Loy, Lucille Ball. They would have all done that broadcast right there with a live band behind them and look at that. This would have been the seating. There's even a balcony. How cool of that, the uh, Monobon Theater, to let me come up here and just take a look. I told him what I was doing, a little history on the Lux Radio Hour, Lux Radio Theater, and sure enough. And this is what it would have looked like from their point of view while they were doing the broadcast. They would have had a microphone in front of them. Cecil B. DeMille would have been over here introducing them and they would have performed to this. Look at all the numbering down here at the end of the stage. It's what they call Old Broadway font. Wow, that was totally cool of them to let me uh, come in and show you guys a little bit more of the history. I'll show you the lobby on our way out. I've actually worked catering events here. There's a couple of uh, like VIP lounges up here and then around. Very cool. There's some memorabilia from Ricardo Monobon. Some of you know him as Vincent Ludwig from Naked Gun. Some of you know him from Fantasy Island. Some of you know him from the great movies of the 30s and 40s. We're out of here. Well, it doesn't get too much more real than that, does it? We just actually got to see where they would have done those radio broadcasts. And right here is where the stars would have been dropped off. This is the, uh, the VIP entrance where you would have had a red carpet going right up the entryway to the theater. And it was located right here, right below Hollywood on Vine. Right directly across from, at the time, what would have been the Brown Derby. Now you can see right here in front of the theater they have a sign that actually kind of historically dates it, the Vine Street Theater. And then it said it was originally built in 1927. This was a legitimate theater until it was taken over by CBS Playhouse Theater for the Lux Radio Theater hosted by C Cecil B. DeMille. Ah, the Huntington Hartford. That's what it was called in between the time it was the Vine Street Theater and the James Doolittle Theater. Huntington Hartford, sorry about that. All right, now I need to hit the uh, post office and mail something out. And if anybody was wondering, yes, I did watch WrestleMania. I thought there were some good moments. I, I didn't hate it, but there have been some years I really didn't like it at all. This year, I liked most of it. I thought it was pretty well done. Oh yeah, we'll have to vlog this one too someday. And yeah, I actually did think Ronda Rousey was awesome. I loved her tribute to Roddy Roddy Piper. Oh, we're over here by Cosmo Street. 
right around the corner from the Beto Lido. If you never saw my vlog on the Beto Lido, go watch that. This is new, haven't seen this one before. That's all taken care of, and I got a total for my international people for the uh, Days with Jordan Lion green sunglasses. And big thank you to everyone that pre-ordered them because you wanted to support. That's awesome. I think I only have like 20 pair left that are not pre-sold. Now, if you remember my friend Stefan, who was in the uh, the Didi Ramon vlog, he was also part of the story of the um, the Viper Room vlog. And I told you that he actually was there that night, and then found out the next day when he went to work that. That was River Phoenix who was passed up on the sidewalk. He was working right here, a playmate. So there you go, Stefan. I hope you're, uh, you're tearing up at seeing your old job. And when he worked here, I believe he told me that his, uh, his co-worker was Ryan Roxy, who was the, uh, or now is the guitar player of Alice Cooper. Somebody asked me in an email if uh, if they were just seeing things or if that was true that some of the stars on here don't have names. Yeah, some of them don't yet. Uh, eventually, uh, when new people are honored, they'll get to select from the open spaces on Hollywood Boulevard to, uh, to have the name, or on Vine. You can do it on Vine Street as well, so. Yeah, there are still some open ones. But uh, yeah, it's not an optical illusion. They're just waiting for people to be invited to pay that astronomical fee to get the star. And a lot of times with the modern people, if they're in a movie that's being promoted, then the, um, the production, in order to promote the movie, will pay for their star so they can have that person getting a star with their posters of that movie splashed all over the place. Wow, J-Lo does not age, does she? All right, I gotta head to the grocery and buy some, uh, some more juice. Well, I was coming over here to get the um, the Russian ice cream, but they're closed today. This is where Adam, the Woo, and I get Russian ice cream. No dice today. All right, let's hit Ralph's. I am still squeezing my own, but I like to get some of the pre-made ones. They taste a little different. And I like this kale cooler one, or the kale blazer. All right, that was easy. Well, we just got the mail. And thank you, Catherine Piero, sent me a phone case for my new backup phone, which might actually become my new regular phone. So nice of you, thank you. He said thank you for making you a part of the vlogging adventure, thank you. Well, that's it from here, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see y'all tomorrow. I want to thank Michelle Tsanakis, Stephanie Williams, and Bonnie Ingram for becoming my newest Patreons, everyone else. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night and good I never really cared about my job. I was always working for someone else. I won't put a flower when I was five. With the neighbor kids of Baltimore, she's a firefly.